So you've just finished your football game, but what do you do now? If you're a baller, you're probably never 100% to actually play a game. There's always an ounce of pain somewhere. Well, by following this video's five steps, it will help lower the chances of being sore and even removing them. Without further ado, let's get into it. Number one, the cool down. Crucial to making the other steps work together. As soon as your game is done, you should complete a quick cooling down process. Preferably doing it with your team, but if it's just you, that's okay. The major benefits I always see is reducing muscle stiffness and soreness as a simple light exercise and stretch can help remove lactic acid buildup in the muscles. It is also crucial for injury prevention as it allows the muscles to relax and recover gradually, especially as you're getting older in age. But boys, if you are still young, fit and healthy, this step isn't that much of a worry for you guys. Which puts me on to number two, recovery. If you haven't yet set up a recovery plan after your matches, then you should definitely do so. My favorite things to do is stretching. This simple practice helps to relieve muscle tightness and tension, which can prevent discomfort and improve posture. Perform the stretching exercises targeting all major muscle groups. Hold each for around 20 to 30 seconds. But also boys, it isn't just about stretching after a game. It can also be prior to the game or even when you just saw. My tip is to incorporate it into your morning routine if you can. It's just like a cold shower. It wakes you up and switches on your mind. My other simple recovery method is rolling and the rest. If you haven't picked up yourself a foam roller yet, then what are you doing? They are perfect for relieving pressure points that may feel sore and improve blood flow to your desired muscle. Increasing this blood flow causes a much more speedier recovery. And when I say the rest, I'm talking about the other little gadgets that are low key related to foam roll. These can include a massage gun, vibrating foam roller and balls. These all have the same effects as the basic foam rolling, but they are more enhanced and offer a greater placebo effect. Trust me, that may seem stupid, but it really does help. There is also many other ways to recover, but these can be a bit more expensive, like going to the pool, having an ice bath, sauna, or even going to chirotherapy, anything like that. But I'm almost certain that you guys don't have your own chiro chamber. But that puts me on to number three, the meal. It is so important that you refuel your body with the right nutrients after a game. The key things you should always consider when making your meal is carbohydrates and proteins. Carbohydrates play a key role in replenishing glycosin stores used up during the match, which help restores energy levels and prepares the body for future physical activity. Proteins are essential for repairing and rebuilding muscle tissue that has been damaged during play, ensuring muscles recover efficiently. Whoa, the heavens just opened up on my face, Jesus. The other thing is hydration. Proper hydration replaces fluids lost through sweat, helping to maintain proper bodily functions and to support overall recovery. To make it easy for you guys, the two meals that I always have is tuna and pasta and salmon, sweet potato and broccoli. Tuna and pasta is so simple. I've made it so many times on my channel before. All you have to do is put tuna and pasta together with your favorite seasonings and you've made the perfect meal. Another one is salmon, sweet potato and broccoli. With this, you can actually change it however you want. Replace the broccoli with broccolini or peas, replace the sweet potato with potatoes, replace the salmon with chicken or a steak, as long as you have the balanced meal of the protein from the meat, the carbohydrates from the sweet potatoes and potatoes, and are getting the right nutrients from the broccoli or whether it's peas, broccolini, cauliflower, anything like that. Which moves me on to number four, mental recovery and analysis. You guys probably didn't expect this, but it's here and it's really important. Football matches can be mentally draining due to the intense focus and competition. There's been so many times that professional footballers have came out and said that the mental side is actually the hardest part. Mental recovery helps reduce stress levels and combat fatigue, promoting overall well-being. An analysis allows players to reflect on their performance, identifying strengths and areas of improvement, and also learn from mistakes. This positive mental recovery and analysis can so massively boost your confidence by focusing on successes and constructive feedback. Understanding and analyzing your performance can keep you motivated by setting new goals and benchmarks for improvement. So how do you actually do this mental recovery and analysis? Number one, journaling and note taking. Keep a journal or notes on matches. Write down thoughts, emotions, and observations immediately after the game while they are fresh. Number two, seek feedback. Discuss the match with coaches and teammates. Listen to their perspectives on your performance and areas to focus on. Constructive feedback can provide valuable insights and new perspectives. Number three, meditation. Practice meditation to promote mental clarity, focus, and relaxation. Find a quiet space, sit comfortably, and focus on your breath. I say this in almost every video that I mention meditation. As soon as you do it, you will feel so much more mentally clear. You always think, oh, it probably doesn't work. It's probably bullshit. But trust me, it really does work. Which further moves me on to number five, sleep. Arguably the most underrated component of effective recovery, but 100% the most important one. Quality sleep is essential for muscle repair and growth and overall physical and mental well-being. To optimize sleep for the best recovery, aim for seven to nine hours of sleep per night and establish a consistent sleep schedule. Going to bed and waking up at the same time each day. Create a sleep-friendly environment, cool, dark and quiet, limit caffeine and avoid heavy meals close to bedtime. Turn off your screens for at least an hour before bed. The blue light emitted from your screens can disrupt melatonin production. You guys should probably know all of this already, 
but it's about if you do it consistently or not. That is the main message for all of you guys. You can listen to all the information I just said, you can know all of this, but it's about you actually doing it. Remember, your dedication off the pitch is just as important as it is on the pitch. All right, guys, that'll be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed, but also learned something. Be sure to like and subscribe. I don't often say that, but please do it. My goal of the end of the year is to reach 10,000 subscribers, so please make that happen. But yeah, that'll be it for me, and I'll see you.